friends of St. Peter's and welcome to our service of worship. We are so glad that you've joined us today, whether you're a longtime member or a friend of a member and you just saw this video uh, floating through your newsfeed because your friend liked and shared it. We are glad that you are here. Along those lines, we hope you will like and share this video so that others may find their way here. And also note that your bulletin um, can be found by link in the comments or the uh, description, both on Facebook and on YouTube. Today, we're particularly grateful that we have Fran and Carolyn here as our readers. Deacon Bob will proclaim the gospel. Reverend Martha is officiating and I'm your preacher. The service will begin after the sound of the bell. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please say with me, the great and wonderful. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just, Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us say the prayer for rain at the bottom of page three of your bulletin. O oh God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son Jesus Christ has promised to all those who seek thy kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain their life, send us, we entreat thee, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to thy honor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we set by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. And the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, 
they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes, there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked and quails appeared and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and water flowed so the river ran dry in the dry places. For the God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations and they took the fruit of others' toil. That they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Alleluia. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner 
who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out at about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came and the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the eight usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I pray that God's word is spoken and that God's word is heard. Amen. Hey, that is not fair. We've been here longer through the heat of the day. What about us? Why don't we get more and why don't they get less? Whew. This is a, a spicy parable we hear today and even a bit offensive uh, to our sensibilities at times. And today we learned that the kingdom of heaven is not fair, that God is not fair. God is more than fair. God is more than fair. We heard another of Jesus' parables of the kingdom of heaven, and as ever, I am reassured at how well Jesus knows us, understands us. Indeed, that understanding that comes from his being fully human, right? I'm struck every time we encounter this parable. Um, every three years, <laughs> these same things really strike me. And, and it's because we've, we've all seen this parable play out in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in our families. I was here first. Doesn't that count for something? And why are you making them as good as me? Oof. It's a, a rather devastating mirror to be held up to that part of our brokenness, isn't it? And every time I hear this parable, I'm, I remember a time back in Maine, and you may remember my having told this story before. There were, there were two families. Uh, one was a family with young people um, who served as acolytes, but they came to the early service. They were really the only acolytes we ever had at the early service. And so they were the acolytes every single Sunday. And their parents sat um, in the back right side of the nave, proudly watching their children serve as acolytes. Um, and as the years went by, uh, their eldest was ready for confirmation. And at that time, our bishop's practice was to have all the services come together in one event for confirmation and for her visitation. And so, we did that, and um, that day, um, as we all came together in one service, um, all five of this family sat in that pew on the back right side of the nave. Well, well, there was another family uh, who, um, who thought that was their pew. <laughs> and so when they showed up, they, and then they had been at this church 
decades longer than this other family. Um, when they got to the church and they saw this family, they didn't know because they went to the early service and these other folks came to the late service. Sitting in their pew, they were really upset. They actually asked me to, to move them from their pew. Um, and I had to walk the uh, tricky line of, of assuring that there was room for everyone. Um, and that um, and in being welcoming to this family that was celebrating this confirmation um, was not actually taking away from somebody else. There was room for everyone and there's always room in God's kingdom. And that's the whole point of the parable we heard this morning. God's love and grace is not a limited economy. The kingdom of heaven is not fair. It's more than fair. And when God loves you, it doesn't mean there's less of God's love for me. Right? Well, the parable Jesus told in our gospel this morning makes absolutely no sense from a traditional economic perspective. It's, it's not meant to. And it helps to hear it in its context. It, it comes just after Jesus had told the rich, rich young man that he would need to go and sell everything in order to inherit eternal life. And the young man goes away very sad because he had many, many possessions. And then he tells the disciples, it'll be harder for the camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And then good old Peter says, but hey God, we've given up everything for you. Isn't there something in it for us? Shouldn't be, there be a little more in it for us because we've left everything behind and jesus assures him that those who have left houses and families etc will have eternal life but he says many who are first will be last and last will be first and then he tells the parable we heard deacon bob share today which concludes with the phrase in reverse so the last will be first and the first will be last in other words, God's grace will give you more than you can ask or imagine, Peter, but don't go thinking that you should have more than anyone else. The kingdom of heaven isn't fair. It's more than fair. And so Jesus' audience is important to take in. The parable wasn't meant for the ears of the Pharisees or the other opponents of Jesus from within the Jewish leadership. That would be Far, easy, far easier for us to dismiss. We could say, oh, well, he meant that for them. No, no, no. It wasn't uh, even meant for the casual listener who decided to see what the fuss was about, this Jesus of Nazareth guy. It was meant for the disciples. It was meant for those closest to Jesus. It was meant for the insiders. And so really it was meant for us, those of us who seek to be disciples of Jesus, to be followers of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven isn't fair. It's more than fair. So what is it about human nature that leads to this fear that if they get something, it means it's less for me? If someone gets something good and lovely or even necessary, it necessarily means something's taken away from us. Where does that come from? I think it's a fear of scarcity, a fear that there won't be enough. And that's why I'm so grateful that um, we heard the Exodus passage we did today in which God provides uh, the quail and the manna. God provides enough bread for the day, food for the day. It's fun, a little fun with Hebrew that manna basically means, what's that? God gave us, what's this to eat? And quail, if you've ever seen a quail, you know it's, it's not a big bird. It's not like God gave a Thanksgiving turkey uh, as we know it. God gave a tiny little bird just enough of them. There was enough. God gave enough. And if they tried to keep more than enough for themselves, unless they were preparing for the Sabbath, it would rot. All would be lost. So the passage from Exodus is a wonderful uh, way for us to remember God's provision of enough. Now, sometimes we may want more than enough, but God gives us what we need and when we can trust that god gives us what we need we don't need to be threatened by what god gives others i'm reminded uh, of this wonderful quote by martin luther that that great reformer who launched the reformation in uh, in 1517 um, 
amazing. He, he said, we are all merely beggars telling other beggars where to find bread. Um, and, and a colleague of mine likes to add, the problem is when we start to believe that the bread actually belongs to us, that the grace and mercy and love and forgiveness of God is ours to hold on to rather than ours to share. So the problem is when we believe that the pew belongs to us or the neighborhood belongs to us or God's grace and forgiveness belongs to us or whatever the grace and beauty is that God has entrusted to us is somehow our possession and not ours to share as God shares so abundantly. The kingdom of heaven isn't fair. It's more than fair. And so this is where I find gratitude to be helpful, to get me out of that mindset of scarcity, that mindset of thinking if someone else receives something beautiful or lovely or, or gracious, that somehow something is taken away from me, is to stay in gratitude, stay in gratitude that we don't get what we deserve. Thanks be to God, I don't get what I deserve, right? God gives me more than I deserve. God is gracious and abounding in steadfast love and mercy and generosity and forgiveness. God is more than fair. That's grace. And it's grace for us. And it's grace for all of God's children, all of God's children. Such an astonishing and astounding truth that God's love is not a limited economy. The more love and grace for you and for those other people is more love and grace for all of us, not less for anyone. Indeed, the kingdom of heaven is not fair. It is more than fair. And thanks be to God. God's grace isn't dependent on what is fair, whether we showed up to work that first hour of the day or in the heat of the day or when there was only an hour left to work, whether we were firstborn or a late in life surprise in the family where we were, whether we were first in a school or a neighborhood or dare I say, even in a nation. We're not called to regulate God's grace, but we are called to share it, to share it with love and joy, to, to give more and more away, knowing that that just means there is more. There is more as we celebrate God's grace in the lives of others and give thanks for God's grace in our lives and give thanks that the kingdom of heaven is not fair. It is more than fair. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And as we start our prayers of the people today, uh, we invite you to put into the comment stream on either Facebook or YouTube or both, uh, those for whom you would like prayers this week who are celebrating anniversaries or birthdays. We also ask your particular prayers this morning for those who have um, passed away this week. We have lost, lost some members of our parish family. Um, specifically, David Ringrose, Helen Ensign, Kathy Harvey, Ian Hirschholm, Tom Payne, Grace Battle, and Tom LaHaye. So now would be the time for you to please put those names in the chat streams. Thank you. Come, all who labor in the vineyard of God's grace, let us join together in the offering of our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That our commitment to justice may extend to those we employ in our households and businesses, paying a fair and living wage, 
clarifying expectations, and seeking honest work in return. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may bridle our tongue against the urge to complain, channeling our energy to generously participate in the building up of the community of faith. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may recall the sacramental meal of the Eucharist as a foretaste of God's heavenly banquet, responding to its grace by helping those who are the weakest among us. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our homes may be schools of religious faith, where God's loving presence is revealed through personal sacrifice, ongoing forgiveness, and mutual joy. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may rejoice in the beauty of the season and honor the extraordinary diversity of plant and animal life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may join in the company of the angels and archangels, all the saints in heaven, and rest in the blessed arms of him who is the first and the last, Jesus our Redeemer. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of great sickness, we flee to you for relief and comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use for their cure. Comfort those who mourn or who are in great financial distress. Endue our leaders with wisdom and courage. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, we we confess confess that we have sinned sinned against you in in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And And also also with you. you. We invite you to exchange the peace with whoever may be in your place of abode. My little four-legged friends here with me. So we remember, especially today, a special birthday, Chris Braden, Molly Stone's son, uh, as he celebrates his birthday on Saturday. And let us pray for Chris and for all of the others that you have named, either in the chat streams or in your hearts. Watch over thy servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we come to the moment of our offertory, we thank you, as ever, for your constancy and your faithfulness of being good stewards at this time. Your faithfulness and um, your contributions and pledges to St. Peter's as we continue to minister during this time of pandemic. You may make your uh, gift or your pledge by text to give using your phone, using 858-252-0622. You can go to the St. Peter's website, which is stpetersdelmar, sorry, stpetersdelmar.net slash give and follow the prompts there. And you can use the U.S. mail and just send a check to St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Post Office Box 336, Del Mar, California, 92014. 
let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God. And with gratitude for our many blessings, all things come of thee, O Lord. And of thy own have, have we given thee. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And friends, let us say together the general thanksgiving. God, our creator, our center, our friend, we thank you for our good life, for those who are dear to us, for our dead, and for all who have helped and influenced us. We thank you for the measure of freedom we have and the extent to which we control our lives. And most of all, we thank you for the faith that is in us, for our awareness of you and our hope in you. Keep us, we pray you, thankful and hopeful and useful until our lives shall end. Amen. And the blessing of God. Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, be upon you and those you love today and always. Amen. And Mother Paige has a few announcements. I do. I want to start by thanking everyone who participated in our drive through event last Sunday afternoon. It was so great to see all of you, to have that time um, that was, it may have been brief, but it was time of fellowship to see one another, to pray with you, to bless you uh, or your devices, your, your laptops or your backpacks. Uh, your dogs. Um, it was just great to see all of you. And thank you to the, the varieties of ministry leaders who are there. Uh, also to, uh, to be present to you and to one another. It was really a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. And um, stay tuned because there will be more such drive through events throughout October, especially. And then after that, at least on a monthly basis. Um, so if you are hungry for the St. Peter's community, if that's what you're missing the most right now, um, is being together, plan to join us the next time we have a drive through event, which will be on October 4th. And that will be, um, amongst other things, our drive through animal blessing. So uh, mark your calendar and plan to be there. Thank you also to everyone who has um, stepped into the space um, of service, either at the thrift shop or helping hands or showers of blessing in this season. We're so grateful for your willingness to offer yourself in this ministry. Um, we're excited about what we're doing this fall with um, the small group ministry, and that registration is available to you now. I hope you'll go online. Um, we'll put the link in the comments. I believe it's stpetersdelmar.net slash small groups. Is that right, Reverend Martha? Um, and you can register for a small group, but also uh, it was fun last Sunday to enjoy that 10 o'clock hour forum time with so many of you as we began the journey through uh, reading the scripture together uh, in the path. So I hope we'll see you again. And if you missed last week, don't worry, you can catch up. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, very, very much love to have you. Are there other announcements I should be making at this time, friends? I would just like to remind folks that we did record last Sunday's forum at 10 o'clock, so if you missed the forum, please email me at manderson at stpetersdelmar.net, and I will send you the link and the password for that recording. That's right. And also, if you missed the even song that we, we celebrated with the people of St. Bart's, you can still see it. We, we sent out a link uh, during the course of the week. I hope you will take that in. It was extraordinary. And thank you to our our various mu magic magicians, <laughs> musicians, uh, and others who made that possible. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous service. Um, and uh, especially if you're a fan of Evensong, you don't want to miss this one. So do follow through on that link uh, and enjoy it. Deacon Bob, will you dismiss us? Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. 
Bye for now. Thank you.